Cameron syndrome is a form of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Um, normally abbreviated just HH. Uh, the term HH can be split into two terms hypogonadotropic and hypogonadism. The hypogonadism part refers to the fact that the gonads, the testes or the ovaries, are not fully functional. The testes are supposed to produce sperm and testosterone, and the ovaries are supposed to produce oestrogen, progesterone, and to release eggs. In hypogonadism, there is a failure for the testes or ovaries to function correctly. Now, sometimes the, the far more common cause is primary hypogonadism, where the testes and ovaries were functional at one stage, then ceased to function correctly. This is reasonably common, or in Kamen syndrome and HH, it is a secondary hypogonadism condition because the testes and ovaries are theoretically functional but they lie dormant because they lack the signals from the brain. Now, for the testes or ovaries to work, they rely on signals, hormones, from the pituitary gland in the brain. These hormones are called gonadotropins. They are called LH and FSH. LH is luteinizing hormone. FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. And together, LH and FSH are known as gonadotropins. They are released from the pituitary gland and they act on the ovaries and the testes. In Kalman syndrome and HH, which is a hypo gonadotropic disorder. The levels of gonadotropins are very low or non-existent. So LH and FSH are not released from the pituitary, so the ovaries do not get stimulated to produce oestrogen and progesterone and to release the eggs, and the testes are not induced to release testosterone or to produce sperm. So if this happens before puberty, which does in Kalman syndrome and HH. Puberty fails to start because there's no signal from the brain, pituitary gland, there's no signal in the form of these gonadotropins to initiate puberty because the gonadotropins are not released. So the testes and ovaries do not start to produce estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So there's no hormonal function and the testes and ovaries remain dormant. In Kalman syndrome, HH, the testes and ovaries will remain dormant until treatment is provided in the form of either hormonal replacement therapy, where they are given testosterone, or sometimes we're actually given the gonadotropins themselves. But we can talk about these sort of treatments later. But just as the basic introduction, Hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, HH, it means the gonadotropins, at least from the pituitary in the brain, fail to work well, fail to get released in the correct amounts, and that means the testes and ovaries fail to work correctly. In most cases, people with Kalman's or HH, their testes and ovaries might function later on, given the right treatment. But without these gonadotropins released from the pituitary gland, nothing gets started and puberty fails. Now there's another um, disorder called Kleinfelder syndrome. Now this is slightly s similar to Kalman syndrome in it, as it affects puberty, but in this case it's a hypergonadotropic disorder. So the levels of LH, FSH are too high, there's too much gonadotropin released and this also prevents the testes from functioning correctly so it reduces the level of testosterone and reduces the level of sperm because there's too much gonadotropin being released but Kalman syndrome and HH there's not enough gonadotropins LH and FSH to cause the testes and ovaries to work and one of the blood tests the doctor would do first is to measure these two gonadotropins as well as the levels of testosterone and estrogen and progesterone and the gonadotropins are LH and FSH.